Good morning, everybody, and welcome to church on this 16th Sunday after Trinity, whether you join us here in person or online. Um, for those who haven't been before, there are activities um, over there um, for young people, and also there's a box of activity bags at the back if any young people would like to do activities where you're sitting. Um, I didn't expect to come back from my holiday and find a Tyrannosaurus Rex amongst us. Isn't that wonderful? Mr. Tyrannosaurus Rex or Miss Tyrannosaurus Rex, we hope you enjoy yourself. <laughs> um, the epistle for today um, is uh, from St. James, uh, the epistle of James, um, an extract from chapter 3. Um, I was really inspired uh, reading that, um, which I did in great haste, um, I might say, yesterday morning, um, in preparation for today. Um, words which speak, um, and I'm going to preach on the epistle, words which speak, I think, as clearly to us as they did when they were written, um, a little bit after your time, Tyrannosaurus Rex, but nevertheless. Um, <laughs> let's say, uh, 1,800, 900 years ago-ish, um, who knows. Um, and the extract that Joy is going to read to us, James talks about the power of the tongue, the power of our words. Um, and he uses this brilliant image of, you've got a great big horse and a bridle, um, a little thing in the horse's mouth and yet the bridle steers this enormous horse, or a rudder on a ship, a tiny rudder in relation to the great ship, but that steers the course. And so he says our tongue is just a little part of us, but what power our words have, and for good or indeed, and what James is getting at, we might say, for ill. Um, which brought me um, to what is in fact my favourite hymn, so any excuse to sing it, um, the good word, the word of God that is nothing but good, the word that is creative, uh, that brings life and hope, um, thou whose almighty word chaos and darkness heard and took their flight, number 810. Would you please stand to sing?
Lord say over here. We pray together. Almighty God, God to whom all hearts, 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 hearts are open, all desires known, and, and from whom the secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please kneel or sit for our prayers of penitence? God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you the right of God. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We stand to sing the glory. A reading from the letter of James, chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check for the bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so 
so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed, and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Our gradual hymn, a prayer, help me, help us, O Lord, to learn the truth thy word imparts. Number 600. And fifty eight, would you please stand? <laughs> Thank you. 
become my followers. Let them deny themselves and take up the cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Uh, to write 
the letter for him, if indeed it was a letter. Because if you read that short letter of James, the letter begins in the style of a letter. James writes, he says, to the 12 tribes of the dispersion. But he doesn't end, you know, not from James, or with a kind of passing words as Paul ends his letters. It just stops the letter of James. So maybe it was a letter. Maybe it's called simply to become known like the letter of James. If he was writing to the 12 tribes of the dispersion, who were they? Maybe they were Jews living beyond Israel. Maybe they were Christians, not um, of Jewish origin, but Christians who, um, if, and there are parallels in Matthew's Gospel in the letter of James, um, Matthew's Gospel in his genealogy um, makes an obvious parallel between the descendants um, or the Christians, the descendants of Abraham, but also the coming Christians as the twelve, as the new Israel, um, the new twelve tribes, if you like, spread throughout the world. We have here no abiding city, writes the author of the letter to the Hebrews, so those who are dispersed. Whoever he's writing to, um, he, t he picks up on themes and he picks up on a style within which is present in Jewish wisdom literature so the book of Sirach in the Old Testament, the book of Proverbs um, did you hear um, supplies uh, to some of us um, in this room um, he begins, doesn't he, chapter 3 um, James um, it's ill-advisable to be a teacher um, he writes um, he then right, goes on, um, we all make many mistakes. Sort of one-liners you might get you know, in a, on a fridge magnet uh, these days. A bit like Proverbs. Um, I looked up some Proverbs for one-liners. I just opened the Bible this morning. Here's one. Uh, this spoke to me. Um, the one who lives alone is self-indulgent. <laughs> Don't take that personally. It's only occurred to me afterwards. It might also apply to some of you. But, um, and here's another one, Proverbs, um, the style of James, uh, or James in the style of Proverbs, but this is Proverbs. Desire without knowledge is not good, and one who moves too hurriedly misses the way. So it's the same, same kind of style. Um, human truths doesn't matter what age we live in, um, the one who lives alone is self indulgent. Um, could apply um, regardless of our era, um, as it were. And so there are parallels uh, between the style of the letter of James, parallels with Matthew's Gospel, parallels with Proverbs and other Jewish wisdom books. Um, a word that we've heard read uh, by George, the word perfect, the one who speaks well, doesn't, whose tongue um, doesn't indulge in, maybe shouldn't indulge in, is perfect. Uh, Matthew's Gospel in the Sermon of the Mount, he says, therefore be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Um, and you might well think, well, that's impossible. Um, the word perfect has within it a Greek word, a Greek, it's got the, the sense of gold in it. The end, the telos, the end. So it's a sense of it's being perfect, sort of have everything lined up in yourself. Be a person of integrity. Be perfect. Um, so let everything within you, uh, like a bit like a stick of rock. Be a stick of rock. Um, you know, wherever you cut it, um, you get the same message, the same thing. Um, all that sounds rather. Um, Idealist, but um, how about this? Um, in a way, this makes it worse, but not worse, but I want more, more to say. There's a, a, a second century, early second century Christian convert uh, called Hegesippus. Hegesippus, this is what he writes. And for him, um, he's writing about James the Just. 
also um, another name uh, applied to James, the brother of Jesus, who may have written this this epistle. He said, James, the Lord's brother, succeeds to the government of the church in conjunction with the apostles. Um, James was the leader for 30 years of the first church in Jerusalem, and given that role by Peter. He has been universally called the just from the days of the Lord down to the present time. So many bore the name of James, but this one was holy from his mother's womb. He drank no wine or other intoxicating liquor, nor did he eat flesh. No razor came upon his head. He did not anoint himself with oil, nor make use of the bath. He alone was permitted to enter the holy place. But he did not wear any woolen garments, but fine linen only. What they're picking up on there is uh, James in chapter 2 about fulfilling the law, the Jewish law. James in his writing isn't casting away the Jewish law. He's saying that we as Christians should excel in our fulfillment of the Jewish law. And he's writing for the Jewish Christian kind of converts. So and not don't shut the old law away, but live it to the full. So um, James says Hegesetius does that. He only wears fine linen. He doesn't break the code of the Jewish law. He alone, I say, was wont to go into the temple, and he used to be found kneeling on his knees, begging forgiveness for the people, so that the skin of his knees became horny like that of a camel, by reason of his constant bending the knee in adoration to God and begging forgiveness for the people. Isn't that good? So, what was Last it through time, James's reputation was that he was so often kneeling down. They must have said, see his knees. They've gone hard. The skin has gone hard um, through his prayer. But he isn't somebody, the epistle would tell us, who, as they say, is so heavenly minded he's of no earthly use. Quite the reverse. James is the one who comes out with that one liner. Faith without work is dead. There's no point having faith if it's not going to be grounded and visible to how we live our lives. Um, Martin Luther didn't like that. Um, Martin Luther put, uh, in his translation of the Bible, he put the letter of James towards the back. Um, he didn't like it. He said it was an epistle of straw um, and that was all to do with the James's Claim faith without work is dead. It could have been not James, the brother of Jesus, but if the two people were different people, James, the son of Alphaeus, one of Jesus' first disciples. Um, whoever he was, he was stoned to death in around AD 62. He was stoned to death by order of the high priest, who had been the leader of that first church in Jerusalem. He who had worked to convert the Jews. And what does he leave behind? He leaves a letter, and he leaves, well, he's, he, Paul, when he writes to him, Paul says that James is one of those to whom the risen Christ appeared. In that beautiful uh, passage of 1 Corinthians 15, that Paul's talking, Paul said, at the end, the least of all of one and time was all he appeared to me. Before that, Paul says, he appears to James and to one and to the other apostles. So James leaves a letter showing us how to live a Christian life. In the Gospel, Jesus says to Peter, or says to the disciples, who do people say that I am? And Peter, he asks, who do you say that I am? Peter says, you are the Christ, 
the Son of the Living God, saying who Jesus is, not just about our tongues, what our tongues say. What does our life say about who Christ is? Um, and if we want perhaps to improve upon the speech that our lives give, um, we might do well to read those five chapters and take even one of his maxims to heart. Amen. Green Service Booklets, and we stand to declare our faith in Almighty God. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, <clears throat> the Almighty, maker of the heaven and the earth, earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We, we believe, believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God. God, God, God Light from light, light, true God from true God, God begotten from not made, as one being with the Father, who in all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have an end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from Father and Son. Who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism and all the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Would you please kneel or sit for our prayers of intercession as Judith will lead us?
and show forth thy glory in the world. Give wisdom to all in authority. Bless Charles our King, and direct this nation and all nations in the ways of justice and of peace, that men may honour one another, that people may honour one another, and seek the common good. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours in Christ, that we may serve him in one another, and love as he loves us. We pray for the sick, especially those in this church, in this place, and who are, have asked for prayer in this church. Simeon Patel and his family, Margaret Bowman, Francis Cornell, Audrey Clark, Martin Harrison, Hazel King, Constantine Bernata, Heather Sims, Susan Daly Jessica, His Majesty the King, and we thank God for the recovery, the partial recovery of the Princess of Wales. Be grace to us, our families and friends, to all our neighbours in Christ, that we may serve him in one another as, and love as he loves us. Save and comfort those who suffer, that they may hold to be to good and ill, and trust in, trust in thy unfailing love, whether they are sick or whether they suffer in war or from abuse, we ask God to help them. Hear us as we remember those who have died in faith, and grant us with them a share in thy eternal kingdom, and comfort those who mourn their passing. And we particularly pray for Jennifer Jones, his family, and, and, and Sylvia Speaks. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord being always with you. <coughs> and also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and singing. pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us, and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen.
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Um, it is really nice um, to be back. Um, I have to say, I felt that uh, very much just before the 8 o'clock service um, when I saw Timothy Clark um, walk in with a crate full of tomatoes, um, which are um, just on the bench uh, as you go out. Um, if you'd like to help yourself to some tomatoes, there are, he's even brought some little bags to put them in. Um, if you wish to drop a few pennies through the slot, um, under the dome well, to the right of the door uh, where it says donations, please do. Otherwise, please just um, relieve us of the tomatoes so that the mice don't get there. Um, that would be helpful. Um, tomatoes. Um, bulbs, um, there's another box of these. A um, hundred days of spring collection. The food bank, Selwyn Food Bank, which because of the temperature in here in winter um, were instructed to move to the Methodist Church. Um, they gave us, as a token of their, a token of their thanks uh, to us for making this space available for, for them and for their clients, um, another box of these, as well as this one. Um, I'm going to uh, see if the CATS group, the students from Sun Village College who enjoy doing helpful things, um, would like to plant them. Um, if they don't want to, we'll be doing it, but I'm sure they will. Um, but wasn't that nice? Um, they gave us them, us them a few weeks ago, but I said I'd stay, uh, save them up until I was here so I could let you know where they'd come from. Um, subject to tomatoes, um, Harvest Sunday will be the 6th of October. Um, you might like to know um, there are going to be uh, three people from G's, including John Shropshire. Um, whose father is, was G of G's, um, the vegetable growing uh, place up the, um, up the road, up the A142. They're going to speak in the sermon slot, uh, which would be really interesting. John himself and two of his colleagues. Um, before that, next Sunday, um, September, you might know, is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Um, uh, we uh, prayed last year for little George um, Radcliffe, who so sadly died um, in October of last year from rhabdomyosarcoma. Um, I thought it might be nice if, in some way, uh, next weekend, uh, we give the service, the 10 o'clock service, um, a Childhood Cancer Awareness Month theme, um, which, um, if you want to do something, something in gold, um, if you have a little gold badge or a, I don't know, a pin or something, gold is the colour um, for Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. And I shall try and do um, something um, in the sermon slot as well. Um, helpfully, the gospel is um, Jesus taking a little child um, and standing this child in the midst of all the disciples who are thinking about themselves. And he says, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. So, um, not in a sombre way. Um, we'll try and think about that next Sunday at 10. And there'll also be an opportunity to make a donation to uh, the Childhood Cancer and Leukemia Group on that Sunday. Uh, Saturday, before that, Saturday coming, Tony at 3 o'clock in here will give a live and swinging concert. Um, he's got a lovely air about him. So even if you don't like swing, um, in my experience, you'll like it if Tony does it. Do come three o'clock on Sunday. There's no tickets, just a donation at the end. Harvest Supper is on the 5th of October. Michelle, um, by next week, we'll have some bits of paper, won't we, to, about that. Good. So get it in your diaries, and it's in the little what's on the Coffee at the end, uh, or refreshments of any description. Uh, including tomatoes. Our final hymn, Tell Out My Soul, not just my tongue, Tell Out My Soul, The Greatness of the Lord. Number uh, 
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ.